Red Cross Society. Modula Minsize has the details. I guess we take a break right, right now. We'll be back. Time now to take a look at the international news. A gunman in Somalia has killed two members of the medical charity Medicine Sans Frontier in the capital Mogadishu. The French medical organization is active in the war-torn country, but analysts are worried about its future in the country following the attack. The and Egyptian prosecutors backed by special forces have stormed residents and homes belonging to various NGOs operating in the North African country. We have more on these stories and others in this roundup of news. Medical aid agency Doctors Without Borders confirmed Friday that two staff members were killed by a gunman in the war-torn Somali capital Mogadishu. They were killed Thursday during a shooting in the organization's compound. Police arrested the gunman identified as a Somali employee with MSF. A local member of the organization said the man had had an argument with his employer and returned with weapons the next day. A major clampdown on human rights groups in Egypt drew a torrent of criticism. Prosecutors backed by special forces stormed 17 offices of local and international non-governmental organizations on Thursday. Shown here on an amateur video confiscating computers and documents as part of a probe into allegations of illegal funding from abroad. Washington said it was harassment. The final Council of Ministers meeting took place in Cote d'Ivoire. It was an opportunity for the Prime Minister to outline drastic measures to discipline Republican forces soldiers. As soon as the military police force was set up, it went to work. 46 people were arrested, 14 weapons were seized, 694 munitions seized, 11 motorcycles and 4 vehicles were also seized. With or without Guillaume Soro, the makeup of the new government will be announced by Alassane Ouattara at the beginning of the new year. The Secretary General of Senegal's Socialist Party has strongly criticized the government of President Wad over the handling of recent disturbances in a Dakar neighborhood. Usman Tano Jang of the opposition PS says the shooting incident that led to the killing of one person was a ploy. We have details in this report. The Socialist Party of Senegal is now saying that anything is possible with the government of Abdoulaye Wad. The statement came after the arrest and locking up of Barthélemy Diaz, head of the Socialist Party Youth Service, following a shooting incident in front of a district mayor's office of Dakar on December 22nd. One official said the shooting incident was part of a plot. This plot is something of a manipulation because today it has been certified that these strong-arm thugs were recruited by someone. They came to the mayor's office. So the important thing today for the justice system is to find out who sent them. That is what we must find out for sure. The Socialist Party says it is ready to do battle to win the release of Barthélemy Diaz, mayor of the district of Sacré-Cœur Mermoz. He has been locked up since Wednesday for voluntary homicide, assault and illegal possession of weapons. The Senegalese read the press and now they have woken up. We've seen on television and we have been shown on Facebook a young man carrying pistols and someone behind him saying, shoot, shoot. The young man shoots and says, you see, journalist, I opened fire. Three people were hit. And if someone was killed, I'm very sorry. And I offer my condolences. They found him in his office, doing his job as mayor, and hundreds of strong-armed thugs assaulted him. He responded, and a man died. We don't know who killed one of the thugs. 
three other people, including Diaz's bodyguard and two men accused of being linked to the attack, were also arrested and locked up. Several witnesses said that five vehicles full of strong-armed thugs recruited by the government PDS party attacked the mayor's office of sacré cœur Mermoz on December 22nd, and they were behind all the violence. Well, time now to take another break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned in. Welcome back. It's now time for a quick look at developments in the sporting arena. Mr. Peter Bonu Johnson, who at one point in time coached the national under-17 and under-20 football teams, is now the senior national team's coach. A media release from the Ministry of Youth and Sports revealed that Coach Johnson will serve for an initial period of one year and adds that he will be working with a competent foreign coach within an appropriate operational framework alongside a technical team. Well, we hope to bring you coach Peter Bonner Johnson's reaction to the appointment in subsequent news bulletins. Let's now take a look at the weather report courtesy of the Central Forecast Office. The Gambia is endowed with a wonderful landscape full of baobab trees like its key point in Bacau. It is one of the most exotic sceneries in the world. The baobab tree is a symbol of resilience, wisdom, and resourcefulness. For the baobab tree provides good food in times of hunger, rents its back for medications, and its sap for glue. In the Gambia, there is a company like the baobab tree, 100% African and purely Gambian in all aspects. In know-how, design, value, capital, and management. That company is Elton. Elton, employing hundreds of Gambians and proudly associating itself with development in the Gambia. Elton, side by side with the Gambia. a warm welcome to the weather segment and from the Central Forecast Office, I am Halle Choi presenting. First, we begin with the summary followed by the forecast. It was cool, breezy and hazy in the early hours of the morning, while partly cloudy, warm and occasionally windy in the afternoon. To know what prevailed over the rest of the continent, we propose a look at the image captured at 16.30 hours, indicating the presence of convective clouds over the southern part of the continent. Elsewhere indicated clear skies and stable conditions over the period. For the forecast tonight, we'll be expecting cool, dry, and hazy conditions to prevail over the entire country, while the day tomorrow will be partly cloudy, warm, and windy. Winds will continue to be northeasterly in orientation, but generally light to moderate in speed. For the minimum temperatures, we'll be expecting 19 degrees Celsius over Banjul and Jindung, 17 over Karawan and Sibanor. Jinoy will record 18 degrees Celsius, as well as Jenyam Burebase and Fototo. Kawul Sapo, 17 degrees Celsius tomorrow morning. For the maximum temperatures, we'll be expecting 28 degrees Celsius over Banjul and Jindung, 27 over Karawan and Sibanor. 29 over Genoi, Kawur Sapo will record 28 degrees Celsius, whilst Basse Fototo will be 30 degrees Celsius warm tomorrow afternoon. For those going to the sea, we'll be expecting a low tide of 0 0.46 meters at 8.22 a.m. and also 0 0.60 meters at 8.22 p.m. For the high tides, we'll be expecting 1.61 meters at 2.14 a.m and also 1.33 meters at 2.56 p.m. For the wave heights, they will vary between 2 to 3 meters high, and they will be mainly northeasterly swells. The sun will rise at 07.28 and will set at 18.47. We now take a quick look at international forecasts. Thanks for the pleasure of your company, and do have a wonderful weekend. 